Today, I'm joined by Matt Hatch, who plays for A-League men's side Central Coast Mariners. Thank you so much for joining me today, Matt. My pleasure. It's good to be here. We'll start with my stock standard basic question, which is where did your passion and love for football first begin? Yeah, look, it started from like a young age. Um, I uh, learned a lot from my pop, who um, was really into football, and he um, helped me develop as a young child used to kick kick the ball around the back backyard with me and um yeah used to take me to training and when I started and yeah now he was a really big inspiration for me which was good to have because football is such a good sport to get a part of and yeah so probably started from him and when you're a kid watching football on tv um did you have any football heroes or idols if so who were they um, yeah, you, you got your stock standard Messi and um, like Iniesta type players. Um, sounds funny, but I used to love watching Oli Bazanic play, which is um, a bit surreal for me still to be playing with a player like him. And um, yeah, and Harry Kiel was a big one as well. Well, those are some pretty good choices, but um, on to your football career for a moment. Um, when you first started going into the Central Coast Mariners Academy from playing, you know, regular football, how big of a step up was it to go into this professional setting for you? Yeah, um, well, it was good for me because I joined the academy when I was 10. So it wasn't really that much of a jump being so young, but um, it really helped me coming in from a young age and was around the professional setup for a long time now. So I've just been kind of used to it really. In those first years when you were in the Mariners set up, what were the most important things you learned early on? Oh, just really like the basics. And um, it's a bit hard because I was so young trying to remember. It was like 10 or so years ago. But um, just making sure I was enjoying football and just getting the basics right and learning how to do them well were really the focus. Um, we've also heard that you were a ball boy at several Mariners games. I've personally nev- never been a ball boy, so I don't really know what goes on. So can you just give us a bit of a rundown of just what it's like to be a ball boy and what are some of the things you might not realise from the outside? Yeah, um, when I did it, I was um, pretty young still. I, I still remember one very fondly. Um, it was one of the Asian Champions League games that um, I was ball boying for and um it's really exciting as like a young kid being able to, as you love soccer and you get to be on the field near, near the players that you, you um, look up to. And um, yeah, no, it's good. There's not really much to it. It's just making sure that if, if the players need a ball, you've got to give it to them. But um, yeah, other than that, it's all about enjoying the experience in my opinion. Sometimes we see um, clips go viral of ball boys and players, you know, getting yelled at by players, all that sort of thing. Have you have ever had an incident where, you know, time's running out in a match and you have an opposition player or maybe a home player getting a bit angry? Um, nah, not, not with me. I've only ever had one really experience that I remember and um, a ball, an extra ball went on the field during the um, Asian Cup game and um, they had to stop play for me to run on and get it. So it was really good to be able to, I was like, oh, I'm on the field. This is, this is great. But um, it was only for a few seconds. But yeah, I really still remember that to this day. Um, that leads me to a good segue, a few seconds. Um, it was only a few seconds into your A-League debut where you scored a goal and, you know, um, it went pretty viral across not only Australia, but the world. So can you just talk us through that goal? Yeah, um, it's still, I still think about it to this day. It's like one of my biggest achievements, obviously. But um, yeah, it was just, it was a little bit of luck, but some people say that you make your own luck. So I, I tend to think that that's what happened with me. Um, I, I waited for my chance and um, I really think I took it in a way. But um, yeah, the goal, it was kind of, it all just happened real quick. Um, just came on the field and it was lucky that a low decided to hand the ball to me on a platter really and um yeah I was just lucky that I put it in the back of the net and then went and celebrated really with all my friends but yeah it was good it was a surreal experience and he is taking a fair amount of time Bowman but gives us a chance to chat about 
Matt Hatch, who grew up on the Central Coast. He's been around the A-League squad for the last couple of pre-seasons. Alu Kual in behind, cuts it back. Incredible. With his first touch in A-League football, the local lad scores. Matty Hatch, that is incredible. Believe that if you can. Believe this even better. I was waiting for his left foot. Blow that, he says. Out of your minor, into the Mariners, on a Central Coast Stadium. First touch as a professional. Right foot, back of the net. And the Mariners sail seven points clear at the top of the competition. As things stand, what a moment for the kid. What a moment for the Central Coast supporters. The Mortys are flying. As I just mentioned, it went viral not only across Australia, but I even seen articles in places like France talking about you. So for you, you just made your debut and then all of a sudden, you know, you're on the news or on social media, all that sort of thing. So just what was that like for you to take that all in? Yeah, it was um, it was a bit of a, dif- a different experience as well, um, not being in all the cameras and stuff like that, but um. I, I kind of liked it. I always, like, as a kid, wanted to be front page kind of, <laughs> you know, and around all the photos and interviews and stuff like that. So it was good. Um, with the interviews, I was a bit nervous, obviously, because I haven't really done any. But, um, yeah, no, it was a good experience, and um, I'm very grateful for it as well. And your debut come in a Mariners um breast cancer day where pretty much every year they wear a pink jersey they auction them off after the match there was a bit of a rumor going around about your jersey that your mom or a family member actually managed to outbid everybody to get your jersey for you so is there any truth into that um she was going to but then um she was going to put a bid on early but then it kind of went out of proportion and people were bidding, bidding stupid amount of money for it but um yeah she wanted to, but then um, we ended up because there was two shirts, so we ended up being able to keep one anyway. So I kind of told her, like, don't worry. But yeah. <laughs> On the Central Coast, Matt Simon scoring the first goal for the Mariners, and then Matt Hatch. Yes, it's true. First touch in the A League, first goal in the A League. Um, and last season, of course, was not just your debut, but your first real break into professional football. So how different was that to what you expected when you were a kid? I know you said that you wanted to be a professional footballer, all that sort of thing as a kid. But was it any different to what you'd imagined or was it pretty much, you know, the same? Um, well, coming from like the first grade team, the youth squad, it, you kind of get a little bit of a look in of how like the professionalism and how, how hard you have to work once you're there. So um, it's obviously a, a bit of a step up, but I think I was prepared for it in a way that I knew what was coming and I knew that I needed to, I wasn't going to get gifted anything. I needed to work for it. And um, yeah, so that kind of helped me, especially working with Monty and Serge before in the youth system, they were very professional. So I was kind of, I kind of had an idea of what was going to be happening. So yeah. And the Mariners have a couple of very experienced players on their book. Marco Urenia, Matt Simon, and of course, Oli Bezenik, who you said you looked up to when you were a kid. So on the training pitch, you know, what sort of lessons and advice are they giving you as a young player? Yeah, um, Marco helps me a lot, as well as Oli and Simo as well. They um, give little tips on how to improve my game and just um, really drive me and push me in training just to be better and get better every day which is good um but yeah I learn a lot from them even just watching them during the games and seeing what they do especially now because I'm playing more of an attacking role than I'm used to being able to watch players like Simo, Marco, um, Nicole, Muller it's um really good to learn from how they look at the game and see what they do during it and take that and use it in my game and looking back on your first season as a professional footballer that obviously just passed, um, how do you think you went overall? What are some things that you wish you could improve on for this next season? 
Um, I think that game time was um, something that I wish, like as obviously in your first year, all you want to do is play games, but um, it doesn't always happen that way. But the chances that I did get to go on and play, I um, really tried to work hard and do the right thing for the team. Um, I'm just working on, especially now, as I said before, I'm playing as more of an attacking player. I'm just trying to learn how to like see the game differently and working on more attacking drills and doing all that kind of stuff. So um, just hopefully just get game time and minutes and because all you want to do is play as a, a footballer. So hopefully I can use this season and get some more experience and see where, see where it goes. And in the lead up to a match day, um, I know some players have certain things they do, pre-match rituals, all that sort of thing. So for you, do you have anything like that? What does a match day look like for Matt Hatch? Um, it's it's pretty relaxed, really, before a game. I don't really like to do too much or be in the sun. And so I kind of, if I'm at home, I like to play a bit of FIFA or a bit of uh, watch a bit of Netflix and YouTube of um, football just to relax and just keep the mind at ease. And then before the game, I've got a few rituals that I, I do like with the shoes and boots and shin pads and stuff like that. Cause I'm, yeah, I like, I don't know why, but I think that that makes a difference. I know some people are like that as well, but yeah, it's very relaxed and kind of just take it easy until the game. Don't want to do too much to, so I can play at my best if I get on and, or if I'm playing and, just stuff like that. 2021 has been a massive year for you, but it's nearly over. 2022 is right around the corner. So what can we expect to see from Matt Hatch in 2022 and beyond? Um, hopefully playing would be good. Or if not, I'll be working my heart, like working hard every day at training just to make sure that I'm doing everything I can do to be the best that I can be really. And yeah, that's a promise that I've made to myself and I'm going to continue doing, I'm doing it now, but I'm going to continue to um, grow and become a better footballer and more experienced and hopefully just see where my career goes. Well, hopefully 2022 is a success for you, but thank you so much for joining me today, Matt. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching. This video is sponsored by Arrow Sport. Go to the link in the description and the friendly team at Arrow Sport will help you create your own football dream jersey. Whether it's starting from scratch or using one of their many templates on their website, creating a jersey with Arrow Sports is easy and prices start from just $50. Go to www.arrowsport.com.au and make your football kit dreams become a reality.